Why do you think it is that they announced this <laughs> now? Well, now is a beautiful time to bury some BS story. And if you're going to do some weak charges that are just basically fake for publicity, but you don't really want people to look into it, you want uh, you want to seem like you're doing something for the residents of Flint. Now is a good time to bury that because, you know, our country is imploding and, you know, COVID's still killing people at a, a fast um, and unimaginable rate. We've got psychos storming the Capitol. I mean, there's lots of news going on. So sliding this in right now would be a perfect time if you didn't want anybody to dig into it. But what's hilarious is they had no idea that uh, you and Jen were already working on breaking a massive story and uh, the timing couldn't have been any better. So, and, and just so people know the behind the scenes, you know some of this, Melissa. So, we, I mean, this story was not ready. We were, we were going to do it probably at the end of January and it was gonna be significantly longer. Mm -hmm. um, but we got, you know, I had a suspicion they were gonna announce the charges before um, Biden's inauguration. I figured, all right, the Capitol just got attacked. There was an insurrection attempt. Maybe they'll delay a little bit. So I have, I have a little bit more time. You could ask my wife and Melissa, you know this, you're not my wife, but you know this. I have been working on this 16, 17 hours a day, probably for two months, including the drive back and forth. Right. I, I mean, my wife is, I would put her name on it because she deserves credit. She has had no, she has had no time with me, and I have not been. Like a great husband. I have not been a great husband because all I've been doing is working on this story, which included. You don't know how many documents I've had to read. You don't know how many sources I've had to call while doing a live stream every day. But when on Tuesday they leaked that Snyder was going to be charged, not what, what, not what the charges were that he was going to be charged, um, I said to the Intercept, I mean. We got to do this tomorrow, or or I got to I just got to do it myself. So to to the intercepts credit, we we crammed uh, in a day and we got this out. And there, you know, the bottom line is when you're doing a story like this, there's legal ramifications. You gotta you gotta make sure everything's correct, um, protect sources. So we got it out. But I said to the intercept, and Melissa, you would know this. I said to the intercept, I don't want to reach out to them, the attorney general, until like half hour before. Because if I give them enough notice, they're going to leak what the charges are because they want to bury this story because they didn't we didn't know what the charges were yet. So I reach out. The Intercept wanted me to give them, you know, at least an hour notice for comment. I reach out and I knew this was going to happen. I reach out 20 minutes later. It's leaked what the charges are. <laughs> no. So they, they did that on purpose. So, oh, all the news would pick up what the charges are instead of the bombshell that, oh, wait, the previous investigators were, gonna, were going for involuntary manslaughter. <laughs> right. uh, Melissa, thank you very much. Uh, Anytime. Thank, you've taken thank you. so, so much, much time. And uh, keep fighting. I mean, I don't think people realize that, you know, we're so focused. I don't, I, I mean, I haven't been, but the nation and the media have been so focused on this Trump reality show for five years that I don't really think people realize that, I mean, this is a, this is a, this is an episode of the walking dead Flint. I don't mean any disrespect, No. but if you go to Flint, I look like hell. I got, you if, know, if you go to Flint, it'll take you, I mean, you've never, if you don't even need to be there for more than 20 minutes. This is a disaster zone. It is a disaster zone. Still nearly seven years later, I have met people that five years ago when I met them in their thirties, looked fine. Not they were sick, but they, they looked fine. I see them now. They look like they're in their 80s and they're still in their 30s. Again, I don't mean disrespect. I mean, lead poisoning, metals, heavy metal poisoning, uh, bacterial contamination, PFAS, PFAS, cancer causing toxins that were in that water. God knows what else was in that water. It just came out uh, it just came out that they were dumping, uh, what was it, fracking? Toxic or? waste. To toxic fracking waste. and toxic waste. Yes, we were drinking fat. We were drinking fracking waste on, on top of everything else um, in this lovely sewer sandwich we were being served up. And they didn't bother to tell us until five years later. So why I'm saying this, it's actually, you know, we just use Flint water crisis just kind of as the name. It's actually a crisis. Like, i.e., when you think of a crisis, like, holy shit, the Capitol just got stormed. This is still a crisis. People are still dying. People are still very sick. People don't have health care in Flint. They are super more susceptible than anyone else. 
I, you know, I, maybe Native Americans because they've been poisoned for 500 right. years. Uh, right. You know, but they, not just older people, all ages are uniquely susceptible to the coronavirus because they've been, they were made sick for 18 months. So it's not a hashtag. It's an active crisis and it's no longer treated that way. President Obama went to Flint the final days for Biden. He acted like nothing, nothing was still going on. I just went there. People are dying. People are still sick. I don't want to blow up your spot, Melissa, but how much have you spent just on medical bills for yourself and your kids? Uh, doing taxes has been fun because um, the year before I spent over $10,000 because um, the dental problems with the teeth falling out of my, my uh, mouth. Uh, I oh, yeah. Um, X-rays were over $10,000. Well, I, yeah, um, for my rheumatologist um, because I've got bone spurs and uh, degenerating spine and neck because uh, lead... Um, Lead's absorbed easier in your by your bones than um, calcium, so we got that fun stuff. Um, yeah, and I don't get you know sick leave or anything like that, and we're constantly sick, so I don't even know what. But yeah, yeah, so thousands upon thousands of dollars we don't have um, to rebuild our home to try to get filtration systems that might make it safer to live in this prison, and. Um, to hear people say it's safe. I, I went off on a Lansing reporter the other night. I mean, I was a little tired, but um, she was like, "Well, now since your water's safe, what do you think?" And I just rail ran it over. I'm like, it, "It, you know, you don't even have to look at the science. It's common sense. Things are so the things are broken. The things are broken. That's the only way to fix it. Uh, it to make our water safe is to fix it. And don't even talk about trust for Flint until you earn it, which you have done nothing." nothing to earn it continuing to lie exactly that same lie blaming the victim saying well they're just scared of the water oh you want to talk about who should be scared of what you should be scared of a whole bunch of flint residents that are tired fed up zombies with nothing else to lose because come on so people need to start doing right by us um and also with every bone in our body we are also fighting to make sure this doesn't happen to you to make sure it doesn't happen to your family. Um, we are fighting to change laws on uh, the state and federal level. So you don't have to end up like us. And we're trying to stop our own poisoning, but also fighting for you guys as well. So please don't forget about Flint, please. And by the way, I know I lied, Melissa, one more thing. <laughs> this isn't just a Republican thing, but Flint happened for two reasons. Rick Snyder said he wanted to run government like a business. Oh yeah. This is what happens when you run government like a business. This is what happens when you view human beings as, uh, as little checks on the balance sheet. This is what happens when you try and make money. This was a privatization scheme, which was not in my story. This is what happens when either you're Democrat, Republican, whatever, that you run government like a business. Larry, my father, if you're watching, this is what happens when you run government as a business. I know for a fact, do you know that Rick Snyder, when the matter of gay marriage came in front of him in Michigan, he didn't worry about whether it was ethical or not. He said, what would it do for taxes? This is what happens when you run government like a business. That's number one. Number two, this is what happens when very wealthy people are the, are the predominant rulers of our government. Because when Rick Snyder made a whole lot of money as a computer executive, okay, he's a millionaire. When wealthy white people are predominantly running our government, running our media, by the way, they don't give a flat. Yeah, all right, let's roll the dice, see how, see if, you know, all right, you don't wanna add the proper chemicals to the water to save money? Oh, you wanna, uh, the, the, the water plant isn't ready yet? to treat the water, eh, you know, it'll be fine. Let me tell you something. They would not do that to Ann Arbor, Michigan, which is wealthy white. They would not do that to Benton Harbor. You finished, Melissa. Uh, yeah, and what's funny, let's just keep in mind that Ann Arbor, Michigan, which is a wealthy white college town, is where Governor Snyder has one of his residences. Uh, they, when the Flint water crisis busted out, they removed all of their 110 lead pipes before one single lead pipe was removed in Flint. Interesting, they didn't even have a lead problem, but that's the way that it is. If this would have been, if Flint would have been predominantly white and wealthy, and not to mention, I mean, we do have rich 
areas of town, the Miller Road mansions, and they got just as poisoned as the rest of us. But if this would have been a wealthy white community, this never would have happened. They never would have been like, let's put them on this experimental river. Let's put them on this subpar thing while we privatize the water and get this new pipeline going. Um, yeah, no, never would have happened. They would have been like, oh no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take away my donation dollars. So you're never going to be able to do this. And um, what happened was, they're dumb, they're poor, they're black, they're brown. Who's going to care about them? Flint's not a community, and I quote, that we want to go out on a limb for. So what then smacked them in the ass is that they didn't realize that we actually have some fight in us. And so another part of this is if this would have happened in a wealthy white community, which of course it wouldn't, but if it would have, they wouldn't have known what to do and how to fight back. They would have just thrown money at the problem instead of actually fighting to fix the problem. So they wouldn't know. It's the, it takes people like us, regular people that have had to fight for every single thing our entire lives to be able to fight back. And that is why we need regular people like all of us to be in office. We need the rich white people to have their old butts out of those chairs because they obviously aren't doing anything for the rest of us. And we need regular people in there because regular people can learn the laws. We can learn how to do this, but also we got human decency. And we know that our job is to support our constituents. We know that human lives matter because as of right now, when governments run like a business, when water's treated like a commodity, which by the way, it just started um, being traded on the stock market, um, people die. So there's that. And I don't want you to become one of them people. So get your butts in office and fight for the, you know, <laughs> all the rest of us. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statusquo.com where you could sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statusquo.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we could grow the revolution with you.